Hey, this is uh, Joel, uh, Dutch Nets fan, coming to you with a new video in regards to the NBA Playoff 2023. Before I get started, you can follow us on YouTube, on the Hoopspaces YouTube channel, and you can follow us uh, on Twitter, at Hoopspaces uh, or at Dutch Nets fan. Um, and uh, I have to say, the NBA is the best league in the world. I always say that together with the extreme marketing success of the UEFA Champions League, I think that the NBA is uh, the best league in the world. Um, and the, the game ones have been proof of that, right? It's been amazing. There have been upsets, um, you know, great offensive basketball, um, some good defense here and there. Unfortunately, also some injuries. But, um, yeah, it's just a wild round of um, game ones. And, um, yeah, I'm just happy to be a fan of uh, the NBA. Um, so before we get started, um, I just want to say that um, overall I feel that uh, the NBA is in a good place. I'm curious to see how the ratings are and how they compare, you know, to previous years. But overall I do feel that... Uh, the league is in a very good place and uh, we know that adam silver always wants to experiment um i'm not so sure about the uh, the new cba and um, about the play-in or the in-season tournament but the play-in tournament is one thing that um was absolutely uh, a good experiment from Adam Silver. So for uh, the game once, we, uh, the playoffs started last Saturday, and the very first game was a game of my team, the Brooklyn Nets, and unfortunately we lost. We got blown out by the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, James Harden had an amazing game with uh, 23 points, 13 assists, and he was on fire, especially in the first half, hitting on five three-pointers. Um, another, uh, Miguel Bridges actually had a great first half, scoring 23 points in the first half, adding with 30 points, five rebounds, and only one assist. But um, the scheme that the Brooklyn Nets had um, in regards to double-teaming, um, uh, Joel Embiid didn't work the way they hoped it would because there was always a three-point shooter open and the three-point shots were falling. Like I said, G James Harden had some um, amazing three-point shots, including his signature step backs. Um, you know, but you had the Anthony Melton and some other players um, hitting the three ball. I mean, the 76ers scored a record 21 uh, three-pointers, um, you know, in the playoff game, and they had 13 three-pointers in the first half. So that's just way too much. Um, so the Nets are going to have to see what they want to do. Are they going to keep the same strategy, as Draymond Green said, as they should, and just hope that the other guys don't beat us for four games? I mean, the Sixers are not going to be that hard from three in game two tonight, but we're going to have to see. Um, I didn't see the blowout from the Celtics against the, the Hawks. Uh, I did read that the Celtics let the foot off the gas a little bit, and that's why it was only a 13-point loss. But I think the Celtics were up uh, as much as 30 or close to 30 points throughout, at some stage in the game. And the Celtics are going to have a fairly easy series of it, I think. Uh, Jalen points, um, 12 rebounds and 3 assists. Um, DeJounte Murray had a good game for the Hawks with 24 points, 8 rebounds and 6 assists. But overall, I've heard that this game was not very entertaining for um you know the um uh, fans who have no uh, no skin in the game um for the neutral fans so in that sense let's see where that goes um a more entertaining game was the knicks against the cavaliers so the knicks upset the Cavs. um the game was 101 97 uh, julius randall came back and had a good game um and i'm not happy as a nets fan to be honest to at the knicks won it's already bad enough, you know, that you lose Kevin Durant and Kyrie and that you basically are from a contender to basically uh, in the middle of the pack. It's already bad enough that that ha has happened. The last thing I need is the Knicks upsetting the Cavaliers in the first round. Like, the Knicks fans are never going to live it up. So, Cavaliers, please, uh, you have some former Nets there with Karis LeFert and Jared Allen. Get it done. But I think that, um, you know, the last game of the day, of the first day, uh, was the best game. It was amazing, high stakes, uh, great offense, uh, runs back and forth, uh, three-point shots, and a clutch to Aaron Fox. What more do you need? Um, the Kings won 126, um, uh, 123 in their first playoff game in almost 17 years. Um, liked the MF beam, I should say. Um, it was a highly enjoyable game. I did watch that game. 
Um, you know, Clay Thompson hit a couple of big shots. Steph Curry hit a couple of amazing shots. But um, the Kings managed to hold on to their lead and win game one. I'm really curious to see where this series goes. I think it's going to be the most entertaining first run series, uh, maybe only matched by the Clippers Sun series. Um, and I hope that the Kings pull it through, right? So light the beam. Then uh, f- uh, yesterday we had um, four more games. Uh, the Lakers had their first game and they blew out the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, again, injury is definitely a thing, um, in, uh, unfortunately, in these rounds of game ones. And in this series, there were injuries as well. Uh, um, AD, I should say, went out with an injury. It looked pretty bad, but he managed to return to the game. And he had a, a decent all-around game with 22 points, 12 rebounds, three assists, had blocks as well. I think six blocks in total. Um, he was very effective on the defensive end. Uh, the Grizzlies um, have a big game from Jaron Jackson Jr. with 31 points, five rebounds, four assists. But um, uh, uh, John Morant had a scary fall. Um, rumors are that he might even have had some fractures in his hand, um, but he is questionable for uh, for game two. So, um, you know, I had Grizzlies taking the Lakers, but if John Moran is not going to be healthy, they're already missing Ben Clark and uh, Aquaman. It's going to be a very tough series for the Grizzlies, but not always lost. Only one game has been played, so let's see, let's see where that goes. But it was an entertaining game, but because of the injury, it wasn't as fun as it could have been. Then the Heat against the Bucks. On the past four seasons, these two teams have met up uh, twice, uh, three times, I should say. And um, the Heat um, blew out the Bucks, 130 to 117. Um, I saw the game as well, and I must say, um, injury, right? Um, Tyler Harrow uh, broke his uh, hand, and he will be out for four to six weeks. Uh, and Giannis Antetokounmpo um, landed on his back. Um, and he did not return. I think he only scored six points, and he, he injured himself, came back, played a few more minutes, but um, he is going to be day-to-day, so let's see if Giannis can come back. Um, the Bucks are a superior team to um, the Heat, but you can see that both teams, but especially the Bucks, were a bit rusty because of the time off that they had. Um, good thing for them, for the Bucks, was that Middleton had a good game, and he did try to step up. Uh, Drew Holiday wasn't as effective as he should have been. And uh, for the Bucks, who did um, start to pick up the pace in the second half, it was just too little too late. Jimmy Butler was Jimmy Buckets. Uh, 35 points, 5 rebounds, 11 assists. And uh, the Heat must be feeling good because the Heat, I do feel that Miami believes that they can take this series. But Giannis, questionable, uh, it's going to even uh, confidence more. Um, but I still have my money on the Bucs because the Bucs should be able to win a game or two even without uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. So I'm very curious about game two in this series, whether Giannis can play or not. Then the best game of uh, day two of the NBA playoffs is was definitely, for me personally, the Clippers against the Suns, Kawhi Leonard against Kevin Durant. Um, Russell Westbrook trying to prove that he is still an effective and an elite player. Uh, Chris Paul really wanted to win a ring. Kevin Durant uh, hadn't lost a game since um, being with the, the Phoenix Suns. There are so many storylines there. At the end of the day, the Clippers uh, were up for the vast majority of the game. They were in control. Uh, Kawhi Leonard had an amazing game. Kawhi is Kawhi. He had 8.5 rebounds, 5 assists, but I'm impressed by the defense he played. During the regular season, he didn't seem to pay that much effort on the defensive end, but he can still defend. People were saying that his knees are gone, so he can't sit in the chair anymore. He can still sit in the chair um, in spurts. Um, Kevin Durant uh, was flirting with a triple-double. He was only one rebound short. He had 27 points, nine rebounds, 11 assists. You know, his uh, uh, playmaking was amazing. His defense was great, multiple blocks. Um he was really playing a great all-around game, but it was just uh, they just came up short. And I think um, where the problem that they had is they weren't allow- able to get stops when they needed it. And um, Ty Lu coached a great game, and uh, Russell Westbrook, even though he was atrocious from the field, also had some game-winning defensive plays. So uh, I think it's actually great that um, the Clippers won Game One because I'm rooting for the Suns. 
but I'm happy for uh, for Russell Westbrook's redemption arc. I don't like him as a player, but uh, the shit that's been said about him, he deserves this. He's earned, you know, his time in the sunlight. And um, let's see where this goes because the Clippers winning game run, the Suns are really going to have to show. Are they really the favorites in the West? And that's what I'm looking to see in game two in this series. The schedule is a bit unfortunate that they are always going to play every other day, never having two days off. So let's see how that works for the wear and tear on certain players. But I'm all in for watching every single game of this series. The final game um, um, uh, yesterday was the, the Timberwolves against the Nuggets. Um, I didn't watch this game. I'm not expecting to watch many games in this series, to be perfectly honest. Jamal Murray got 24 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists, and Anthony Edwards at 18 points, 2 rebounds, and 5 assists. Anthony Edwards seemed to have been playing better than he did in the final playing game. Um, however, um, I was hoping that the T-Wolves could put up more per fight against the Nuggets, but I guess that uh, they were maybe a little bit tired after those play-in games. Um, so let's see where, where this happens with game two. I think when the Nuggets win, no one's going to be surprised. I hope that the Timberwolves can make an upset, but um, I think the next two games are going to be very interesting um, to see. If Denver takes care of business uh, at home, then not always lost. But if they also manage to win a game three, then that might be a sweep or Denver just finishes this up in five games. So I think um, game two is going to be very important for the Timberwolves. So let's uh, let's see where that goes. Overall, I'm really loving um, the playoffs. It's the best time of the year. Um, we saw some great offense, some spectacular defense. Unfortunately, like I said, some injuries. Um, I love what the media teams are doing from the teams themselves, but also from uh, ESPN and from TNT. Um, so it's been, been a whole lot of fun. One pet peeve that I have is I do like that uh, NBA seems to be focusing more, finally, on illegal screens. Um, um, and traveling has been something that they've been paying more attention to all season. What I don't like is that still three seconds uh, and eight second calls uh, are still not being called enough. You can check uh, my Twitter feed at Dutch Nets fans for an example where Chris Paul clearly uh, commits an eight second uh, violation. And um, we all know that Shaq Fon shouldn't complain about the rest because his coaching job um, was mediocre at best. However, it is true that offensive three seconds is something that almost never gets called, especially when someone uh, has the ball right underneath the basket, pump fake, pump fake, head fake, up fake, um, you know, pass fake. You know, you can do whatever you want. No one's going to give call. Uh, no ref is going to give you a three-second call. That's definitely something that the refs need to clean up. All right, this was Dutch Nets fan. You can follow me on follow me on Twitter at Dutch Nets fan. Follow Hoop Spaces as well at Hoop Spaces, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel.